today we're talking about currency warfare. Because it looks like the trade wars are becoming popular again, so there's no better time for a spin-off. The conversation has been simmering for a while, but people recently started to turn their heads again when, on Monday, Donald Trump labeled China as a currency manipulator and then immediately called on the Federal Reserve to begin manipulating America's currency. I mean, we're not even pretending to take the moral high ground on this one. So there are two questions that I'm going to attempt to answer today. First, are we approaching a currency war? And second, maybe even more importantly, what is a currency war? Now I know what some of you are probably imagining right now. Billionaires throwing cash at each other. But clearly that's not what's going on today. You gotta think bigger. In a currency war, it's countries throwing money at each other, with the goal of having the most cash on the table at any one moment. Currency manipulation, which is when one currency is used to buy huge amounts of foreign currency. What China has been accused of doing is looking at that table with US dollars and renminbi and replacing the US dollars with renminbi. They then allegedly put those US dollars in their foreign currency reserves and this pumps all of those American dollars out of the market, as they now sit in the Chinese foreign currency reserves, and it replaces them with Chinese money. Here's a chart of Chinese foreign currency reserves, and this was definitely more of a Bush Obama problem than a modern day thing, which is why charging them as a currency manipulator today is a little more controversial. So alright. That's a weirdly specific thing China is doing. I know me and my mom collected a quarter from each state because we know how to have fun, whoop whoop, but this currency collection seems a bit on the obsessive end. Well, one of the perks of having a lot of your currency on the market is that its value goes down. Now that might sound like competing with someone else to see who can shoot themselves in the foot first, but we'll get to that in a second. When you take away trillions of American dollars and replace it with Chinese yuan, you get reports like US President Donald Trump has lashed out against China for manipulating its currency, a move by Beijing that allowed the yuan to drop to a low not seen in more than a decade. Put on your running shoes because this is a race to the bottom. You want to get in an inflation off? Check out our next budget. We're spending money we don't have like it's going out of style. Our currency is going to be so weak it won't be able to get out of bed in the morning. Of course, this raises the question, why would somebody want a weak currency? Well, Here's where we get into the dark end of the moral gray area, and a section of the show where US citizens might be saying, you know what, let's let China beat us on this one. Remember, the final goal here is to lower the value of the currency, aka increase inflation. Roll the clip that makes this plan seem sociopathic. If the minimum wage in 1968 had simply kept up with inflation, it would be more than $10 today. Yeah, it does not keep up with inflation. And that's where you can score some major savings as a person looking to export. Okay, well you can't get paid less than $7.25 an hour, but what if I really, really apply myself and put my mind to it? There must be some way to pay you less. What if I made the dollars you're getting paid less valuable? Then foreigners with other currencies would be able to pay you less for your work, and will be more competitive in foreign markets. As you can imagine, this strategy works much better in countries where you can quickly and violently put down massive dissent. Now I'm imagining some minds are a bit melted right now, so quick metaphor. Let's imagine it's 2001 and I, as a worker, have decided to make all transactions using Bill Cosby memorabilia. Think you know where this one's going. Nothing could go wrong with that currency, he's America's grandfather. So essentially I'll make you an air conditioning unit for one autographed Jell-O pudding snack. All of a sudden, well, all this happens and my prices have gone down significantly without me changing anything. You can buy his memorabilia for pennies on the dollar and then give it to me for that one air conditioning unit. All of a sudden I'm stealing all of the business from everybody else in the neighborhood. And this lack of underlying value has one other major benefit. A weaker currency helps a country in two ways. It makes its exports cheaper to other nations and it helps domestic business by making imports more expensive. 
All right, back to the metaphor above. So now I'm accepting near worthless Bill Cosby merchandise to make air conditioners. Yeah, the details of that metaphor definitely got away from me a little bit. But the logical next question here is, how are you going to survive on this merchandise that's now nearly worthless? And the answer is, well, I can only do business now with other companies that had their prices set in Bill Cosby merchandise when the great crash happened. Expanding this back to the geopolitical stage and China, when they tank their currency, it means that not only are Chinese manufacturing options cheaper for foreigners, but also the employees of those facilities can only afford to buy things made at the Chinese cheaper price. So now we have the two building blocks we need to discuss this issue. What a currency manipulator is, a country that exchanges their currency for a foreign one and then stores that foreign currency, and the more important follow up question of why on earth would anybody ever want to do that? The question now becomes, is China today a currency manipulator? And what happens now that we've called them one? The change that makes this all so complicated happened in 2015. We will stick to the reform policy of letting the supply and demand decide the exchange rate and allow the RMB to float both ways. We are against competitive depreciation and currency wars. Now don't worry, I'm not going to report this as, but the Chinese president said on a Chinese propaganda channel that he was going to float his currency. After this announcement though, China promptly stopped buying foreign currency and started selling off those reserves. Now this is where things get tricky, because they implement those changes and then over the next 3 days the RMB depreciated by 4.4% against the dollar, and it continued to decline against the dollar throughout the rest of 2015 and into 2016. The problem now is, yay, you're not artificially devaluing your currency anymore. Now it's all organic, non-GMO, farm to spreadsheet devaluation because of a slowing economy. It gained again against the dollar slightly in 2017, but since 2018, the RMB's value against the dollar has generally trended downward. The problem, as many economists contend, is that the RMB's recent decline has largely been caused by China's slowing economy and by the trade war. Wait, we devalued China's currency? Oh man, the call was coming from inside the house the whole time. This of course brings us back to this week, because something suspicious did happen. China let its currency slide to its weakest level in over a decade on Monday. It's a sign of the steps Beijing's willing to take in its trade war with the United States. So they're back to their old ways then. But how? They weren't using foreign currencies. But one other change happened in China. As China grew, they tried to increase the power of their currency. And that means going from trying to buy things using jello pudding cups to real money with value. Manufacturing has shrunk as a percentage of their overall economy, and people want to be able to afford to buy foreign made stuff. China has moved in recent years to make the renminbi more appealing, and that means making it worth something. Now this is where things get weird, because it has people asking a new question. Is the renminbi today undervalued or overvalued? Basically, is China artificially weakening their currency or artificially strengthening it? Based on the way I'm posing this question, I think most of you know where I'm going with this. With assets moving abroad, the People's Bank of China has intervened by purchasing large amounts of renminbi in order to support its value. In 2015 alone, China spent over $500 billion of its foreign reserves. So now you're probably watching this and wondering, wait, what? Now they want a strong renminbi? Then what the heck happened on Monday when their currency dropped to its lowest value in a decade? That looks about as naturally occurring as Mount Rushmore. Clearly that's currency manipulation. Well, not really. It's a lack of currency manipulation. They've just stopped manipulating the currency because they let it depreciate. We think there's long-term depreciation um, in the currency, and so the fact they just stopped supporting it and then the market took it below seven is means that they've basically sort of given up trying to appease the U.S. in the negotiation. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Does this mean we want them to keep manipulating their currency so it stays artificially strong? 
Well, again, there are just positives and negatives to everything here. The reason most people think they devalue their currency, though, is to alleviate some of the sting from price increases that will result from the tariffs and trade war. Because for US companies paying foreign factories to make product, well, that labor just got a lot cheaper. Now, not to go full rah rah Trump, he called it, but if this is the motivating factor, well, that kinda seems like China paying the tariffs. As the New York Times points out, China is prepared to let its currency weaken further still. That would give China's factory owners an advantage when they sell their goods in the United States. It would also undermine the tariffs the Trump administration has levied on Chinese-made products. Glass half full, if those tariffs are undermined, prices won't go up in America but rather for anybody getting paid in the renminbi living in China and trying to buy imports. Now the final piece of the puzzle, because for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now as far as shots across the bow go, this is what you call a serious shot. Following the plunge in value of the Chinese Yuan on Monday, the Trump administration has taken the stunning step of officially designating China a currency manipulator. Now this has led to an interesting question of what's motivating Donald Trump? And I'll be honest, I don't do this unless I'm pretty sure I'm right. But I'm pretty darn sure I'm right on this one, so I'm gonna enter speculation mode here. Trump has said he wants to counter this Chinese currency manipulation by using America's own central bank to lower our own currency's value. And how would he do that? Simple, cut the same reserve rate that Trump has been trying to pressure the Fed to cut for the last two years. See about half the episodes on this channel for more information on that one. Jerome Powell can't even cough without me making a special about him. In this case though, the president has also pressured the Fed to counteract the alleged manipulation of the Yuan by aggressively cutting interest rates. The Fed, an independent agency, is almost certain to ignore Trump's request for a weaker dollar. Yeah, people don't think this is going to have result in much with regard to a response. That currency manipulator label just triggered negotiations between the United States, International Monetary Fund, and China with regard to currency. Although most people think that's probably going to be overshadowed by the massive trade war we're currently in. The interesting thing is the biggest people to feel this. Because they're first going to be Chinese workers, because sorry but you're poor now because of state decree, yay communism. Second, it would also hurt exporters in Europe, Japan, and everywhere. America falls into that everywhere category, but basically now it's even cheaper to make things in China, so don't expect to see a Made in Germany sticker anytime soon. Lastly, it could create market pressures for South Korea, Taiwan, and others that compete in similar industries to devalue their currency, potentially disrupting trade and investment flows. Again, things made in China are cheaper, but those countries don't have the tariffs in place to protect themselves from those price cuts like America does. So they've just got a deep discount on all things made in China, which is going to hurt demand for domestic products. So that exactly is what happened this week in the trade war. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.